Hey, hey, good evening, everyone. My name is Tom. Welcome to Ludicrous Feed Live. You're on the EV show. And uh, welcome to Wednesday, the 21st of February, 2024. Nice to have you uh, joining us this evening. Thank you to everyone join who's joining live right now. And uh, if you're tuning in uh, after the fact uh, on replay, welcome as well. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're listening to us on audio podcast, hello as well. All right, well, let's welcome our regular guest. As always, we have uh, Riz from Carloop. Hello, Riz. How are you? Nice to see you. Hey, Tom, good to be here. Um, I think it should be an interesting show tonight. We've got uh, a few interesting bits of news, and there's one that I know, Tom, you and I haven't spoken about yet, but uh, we'll, we'll drop it later tonight. Oh, love it. Love breaking news. Uh, and uh, our regular guest, Rahul, is uh, not with us tonight, so uh, he sends his apologies. Uh, if you're watching, Rahul, uh, hope you're well, and uh, yeah, we'll see you very soon. All right, well, let's say hello to our sponsors, as always, uh, our uh, lovely sponsors, Carloop, which of course Riz has uh, is part of. Uh, Riz is the data king, and Carloop is where you want to go for data uh, for all your needs. And thank you to Cobra Car Insurance as well. Thank you, Cobra, for sponsoring us all these months, and also Warbox as well, doing EV charges, doing some good work in the space. Thank you very much. All right, Riz, well, let's say hello to some of our regular viewers as always. We have Stan from Kangaroo Island TV. Hello, Stan. Nice to see you as always. Uh, hello, H2 Rider. Yes, cool and cloudy this evening in Sydney. Hello, Wayne. Nice to see you from Toowoomba as well. Wayne and Grace, hello. And Mark says, uh, good evening from a hot and balmy Melbourne. Is that right, Ruth? Nice and warm down there? It is. I forgot to put it off mute because that's how warm it is. My computer <laughs> froze. Um, wow. no, it, it is It is warmish, but, you know, we'll, we'll get through it. Yeah, you, you'll survive, yeah. Uh, Aaron says hello as well. Yes, yeah, uh, been a bit rainy this last week, definitely. Hello, Gaffer, nice to see you. And Rob S, nice to see you as well. Uh, and yeah, JD Me Media and Music, hello as well. Walking on Talkie Beach, wow, lucky you, calling down now. And Hal says evening, and yes, funky music. Yep, we've got a new intro uh, this year as well. So thank you for joining us tonight. And Jez, hey, Jez, nice to see you as always. All right, so uh, Gaffer says Riz charts. Oh, sorry, one more, one more joke from Jeremy. Jeremy Gordon, our regular dad joker. Uh, when is a nice car not a nice car? When it has melted away. Nice. nice one. All right, so uh, oh, Andy Vet says hello as well. Hello, Andy. Nice to see you. And Jez has been swimming in your pool, apparently. Uh, Riz, I invite everybody. It's <laughs> it's just the way it goes. There's a pool party going on in Turak East. <laughs> After party at Riz's place, uh, just look out for the Spectre on the front. Oh, Kenny's watching us from the mid-Pacific Ocean on a cruise. Nice, nice. Hey. Okay, cool. All right. Um, right, let's say, uh, yes, yeah, so Riz, Riz charts from Gaffer, I agree. Let's get on to Riz's charts, what we love Riz for. So, Riz, we have, uh, yeah, some used uh, Tesla Model 3 listings uh, trends for 2024 and Prior to that as well, I'm seeing they're going up um, as we speak. What's going on? Yeah, so it looks like the the new Model 3 Highland, now that the deliveries have recommenced after a bit of a pause due to the rear child restraint, mm. um, I'd call it, they just wanted it exposed. So <laughs> apparently that's what's going to happen. So okay. now that deliveries have begun again, the Model 3, three used listings are starting to creep up, which means people are trading it in, getting the new cars. And also maybe some people are just trying to offload in before the price drops any further on the <laughs> used market. So it's, it's a combination of things, but yeah, those looking for a bit of a bargain, there are a, a number of model threes now, 2019, 2020 sort of model cars under 40 grand. Okay. Yeah, under 40 grand is pretty good for Model 3. But we're probably talking 2019, right? Probably the, the first few off the ship back in 2019. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, even some 2020 ones, the sort of mm. late 30s, early 40s, which, mm. you know, it's taken it a while. But um, I guess it means there's many more people that will be able to potentially look at a Model 3. Some may even be considering some of the newer cars like MG4 and maybe just want the Tesla supercharger network for driving around the country. Mm. um so yeah it's it's happening now people do ask me like what what year model model 3 is worth buying and i, I kind of always say well i think for me 2022 is the, the the sweet spot because that's when people start well that's when the cars were suddenly equipped with um amd ryzen computers 
and prior to that was Intel. So I guess if you want an infotainment system that's quicker, then I guess that would be the cutoff point. Early 2022 is when you get the new new chip. Yeah, and there's also that point, I guess, where they went from the traditional 12-volt lead-acid battery to a lithium-ion one. Mm -hmm. um, for those that want something a little bit quicker, late 2021 was the last time they had 0 to 100 in 5.6 seconds for oh, a yes. real drive car. True. Um, so, the, you know, it's basically, as you say, Tom, 2022 is seems to be a good year. If you can find a car that's sort of, you know, 18 months or two years old, mm -hmm. um, basically it feels like a new car because it has pretty much all the latest software features and software updates. Yep. So, you know, yeah, even some of the earlier model Teslas don't feel as old as they really are, which is not a bad thing from, a you know, someone that wants something that is affordable, has some of the, you know, newer features that newer Teslas will have due to the software. Um, and can enjoy similar sort of experience. Maybe the YouTube will load a bit slower. So if you're watching yeah. Ludacris feed, you know, make sure you come on at 7.55, not 8 o'clock. <laughs> that's right and make sure you find a car that's going to be driven to church on sunday so yes. yeah anyway i think low, low, low mileage probably doesn't matter as much than ev right because we know the batteries now last a long time they kind of plot to a 90 percent degradation after a while so yeah i think you're doing pretty well with the used tesla so thanks riz that's good um yeah what gaff is saying too that you can transfer fsd until the end of march now yes good point so let's put this one up um so Tesla Australia is now offering free transfer of FSD and unlimited free supercharging in Australia from your current Tesla to any new order delivered between 19th of February to 31st of March. So basically from now until the end of next month, which is pretty sweet if you want to sell uh, an older Tesla and you want to keep that FSD. So good time to do it. Might see that spike uh, go up even further is, uh, with this offer. Well, and version 12 has just dropped in the US. I know it's going to be a while mm. before we get it, but it seems to be the the, the best FSD so far mm -hmm. um, with a completely, you know, um, new sort of neural network setup. Uh, it's able to do U-turns from some of the videos that I've seen Ooh. and a whole lot of things that it wouldn't normally do. So Ooh. it's, yeah, it's getting there. And hopefully they can update the Vipers as well because we're yeah. still waiting yeah. for that one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's a real pain in the, you know what, at the moment, particularly with all the rain, it's just not great. Well, we've got some more Tesla news a bit later on, but let's uh, keep going with tonight's story. So, Riz, this one is from the Driven China's Cherry to release its first EV into Australia market mid-year. What does this mean for us? It means, I guess, another affordable electric car in that I would suspect, they haven't announced the price yet, but I would suspect they would be silly to go about 50 grand for this because, you know, now you're competing with the Addo 3 and you're competing with sort of the MG ZS ev which you know i think it's still an okay car this is based on a nice platform so um yeah seems to have similar sort of power to an addo 3 similar sort of 0 to 100 um so yeah interesting times and we'll find out what the pricing is yeah it says uh, 0 to 100 in 7.6 so not super quick but i mean i don't think it's designed to be a sports car as such, but 61 kilowatt hour, which is what the extended range out of three is, 430 kilometers of range, WLTP, 15.5 per hundred. That's that's pretty good efficiency, really. Good power, 150 kilowatt. Um, DC charging, I get a bit slow, 80 kilowatts. Um, seen in New Zealand. Yeah. Yep. AC up to 9.9, .9, so a bit, a Nine. bit faster than single phase. 9.9 .9 is interesting, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I wonder why the mid sort of between single and three phase, which is normally 11 kilowatts. Yeah, weird. Um, what do you think of the interior? Is it um, is it sort of more traditional looking rather than, say, the Atto 3, which has got uh, some interesting touches? It reminds me a little bit of the Hyundai Kia cars with that dual split screen in the middle. The Kona Electric comes to mind in terms of the way the screen's laid out. Um, I do like the, the, uh, the cher cherry ambient lighting. <laughs> going in the background there yes nice touch yeah you're right it's like the egmp egmp cars and i think the um the aura gwm aura also has a dual screen like this as well so yeah um interesting so yeah we'll see how well the omada e5 does when it comes to australia later this year so what do you reckon is price wise you said sort of 50 grand didn't you 
uh, it, it can't be any higher than 50 grand. I know we're preempting mm. pricing and whatever, but it's their first EV. They're relatively unknown brand still, although they've been doing all right in the ice world. They've only been around for, uh, from memory, maybe 12, 18 months, maybe a bit longer. This is their second time around. Cherry, for a few of you may remember, they came in with a very affordable hatchback many, many years ago, uh, dropped it and then left. And now they've come back again with, you know, cars that look pretty European in the way they look. I've never driven the Ice One and not look far forward to driving this EV. So under 50 grand, Cherry, keep it that. Yeah, I think 50 grand would be the nice sweet spot for uh, a, a sort of small crossover SUV EV for Australia. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, Kangaroo Island stands saying, I've seen some initial reviews of the Omada in New Zealand. Apparently, it comes with a spare tire. Okay, cool. Space Saver tire in the back, which is good. Only the Kona EV, I think, comes with the Space Saver at the moment. Awesome. Uh, some more comments about the uh, used Tesla listings we had earlier. So Adam Peck saying, had people maybe starting a new lease? That's true. Some of the early Nevada leases are running up. Good point. Mm -hmm. Anthony saying, recently had 90% recall of their current ICE variant due to brake fluid leak. Okay. For the Cherry cars. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll keep going with uh, more Chinese cars news. And we have news from BYD. It looks like... We were sort of speculating about this last week on the stream, but confirmed now uh, by the Driven uh, with a new CEO for the local distributor for EV Direct, uh, and that is David Smitherman is now the new CEO, replacing Luke Todd, who has held the position since mid-2021. Presumably, Luke has moved on to become chairman or something, Riz, of the board, BYD? Uh, I've heard. I haven't got the exact title, but he's still mm. involved in the new product side of things, bringing them into the market. Um, but yeah, they have a new leader in town. So, you know, hopefully with some of the new models that will be launching this year and trying to increase the sales of the dolphin and the seal, which were launched late last year, I think he's got uh, quite a bit on his plate. Yeah. So BYD said that they were only going to bring two models out this year, but I think with this article I was reading from Daniel Bleakley that they're thinking four models now. So they've doubled their offerings for 2024. Uh, and we were hoping that the the what they call it, the, the seagull is going to come here and it's going to be called the Dolphin Mini in Australia, which is, Riz, you wanted the Picante-sized BYD? It looks like it's going to be here. Well, that's an interesting one. So um, there's there's been no confirmation on top of the two models that Luke announced or said they'll be coming to Australia in 2024. Mm. I know there's there's been a bit of talk this last week or so around these four models and potentially oh there's 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 the main man's video right yeah, there it's my video thanks daniel <laughs> uh, uh but no i think i haven't heard too much more on the those additional models if we look at what they're launching in europe they're launching the clu which is likely to arrive here in the first half of the year mm. and then there has been no further confirmation this thing here that i think it's a car sales article mm. now there it the way it reads it's confirmed but from what i know on the ground it's not confirmed okay so it's if we think about it it's too hard for them to get this car up to spec for ancap safety sort of ratings as an example the dolphin they sell in australia is different to the dolphin they sell in china because the australian and the european cars have more safety tech in it. That's why they can get to the five-star ANCAP rating. So this car will, it's, it, it will need to be beefed up quite a bit, which means it will probably be a price close to the current Dolphin. What's a Dolphin now? Sort of sub 40 grand, right? So yeah, it doesn't make sense late, to be that much. Late 30s. And yeah. we're hoping that, you know, if I guess if the sales sort of stay subdued, we might be able to get it for 35, 36 grand soon. Mm, yep. Um, not just the uh, Dolphin Mini, but uh, looks like they're going to possibly bring the, the dual cab ute, the electric ute to Australia. Yeah. So Fev ute is definitely on the cards. Mm. And I've heard in New Zealand that the Bev is also sort of in the works for 2025. So cool. that's what we're sort of looking for. 
yeah, I think that'll be a game changer if we can get a decent, you know, decently priced Ute from China uh, that's fully electric. The challenge will be whether we can convince the fleets to buy BYD. Mm. Because today it's very Toyota and Ford. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that by the time these Utes land, the fleets can sort of say, hey, there's nothing else in the market, even if it is a FEV as a starting point until the BEV arrives. So, yeah, um, more models means more options. Mm, yeah, happy with that. Uh, Gene saying Luke Todd is now the managing director and executive chairman. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's what I've heard as well. I don't know. There's no confirmation that I've seen anywhere. Um, and Anthony is waiting for the confirmation on the sea line. Yeah, that'd be good. Wouldn't mind seeing that here as well. Good looking car. Oh, has it been confirmed in New Zealand? Hmm. Don't know. I'll have to find that Ooh. article. Okay. Um, all right. Well, speaking of the Ute, uh, I might share this one. Um, this is from China or Car News China. BYD pickup truck becomes a Ute for Australia, specifically for our market. Look at this. Interesting. Yeah. That looks very much like a Ford Ranger to me. <laughs> That's right. Uh, still unnamed. So just spy pictures for now. Um, they're saying right hand drive models being tested uh, for the Australian and possibly South African market as well. Interesting. See, BYD already sells a car in China. I think they call it the Destroyer. Now, if this was called the Destroyer, then it would catch quite a few headlines. But, you know, we'll we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, so obviously just all under engineering testing for now. But, um, yeah, surely we're close to getting a, a decent ute because there's only really one offering at the moment, which is the, what is it, the ET60 Max from LDV? Uh, yeah. Which is... So- uh, gone well any any sort of guesses on the name for this view tom mm. if you had to pick a name what would you call it oh is there is there a, a menacing sounding marine animal just to keep with the the byd marine theme like the bull um, shark maybe or, i don't know byd hammerhead hammerhead yeah is that is that an aggressive animal uh, I've no, 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 no. It's great white no there's already a great great wall it's probably too close to great wall yeah the walrus, Stan saying in the, walrus. the chat. BYD Dugon. Dugon, yeah. Walker. Okay. <laughs> King Penguin, Emperor Penguin. I don't know. <laughs> BYD Emperor. Hey, that oh, be... Emperor. Oh, I like that. That's a good name. In keeping with the Chinese, you know, dynasties, right? Yeah, nice. Keep keep those suggestions coming. Uh, yeah, Fireblade says BYD Ute will do well. LDV attempt is a shocker. Yeah, it's been disappointing, hasn't it? Not too many on the roads at the moment as LDVs. Mm. Oh, Peter says, uh, Sea Lion for New Zealand was confirmed on the EVs and beyond YouTube video. Okay, cool. Yeah, one talking about the Seal, seal Sedan with the New Zealand distributor. Nice. Okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, sticking with BYD, we have uh, the BYD luxury brand to launch Quad Motor Supercar. This is the Young Wang, right? Riz? Yeah, Young Wang U9, or I think it's called the Ultimate with the T9. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, quad motor, they reckon 1300 horsepower, close to a megawatt, 1000 kilowatts. Um, don't know what, you know, it's got those suicide type Lamborghini scissor door things going on. Um, not sure what it would be like. Looks looks very tough. Um, very cool sort of attempt at a sort of let's call it a supercar or a hypercar. Um, and there's conflicting news. There's some stuff that's saying, hey, it's going to be around about three seconds, and others are saying it's about two seconds. Whatever it is, we'll find out in a couple of days' time on February 25th. Yeah, that's not far away. Four days away. Uh... I mean, it could be one foot rollout differentiation, maybe between three and two. I don't know, but I can see the design philosophy. It kind of, it kind of looks almost like a, yeah, like the seal or something that's been sort of, yeah, squashed down into a supercar look. I can see where it's coming from. Even the wheels kind of look like that. So, yeah, interesting times. I mean, that looks pretty sexy, I must say, from the side. They, they make a great car. Yeah. So, as you said, there's 960 kilowatts, almost a megawatt of power, 1,280 newton meters of torque. Who needs that kind of speed? I do. Well, it's th- this is it, and I guess all of this from a blade battery. So let's find yeah. out what the fast charging speeds are, 
And yeah, it's going to be quite interesting. It would be a bit of a bummer if it's not as fast in acceleration as a Model S Plaid, which is a family five-door car (laughs) that charges at 250 kilowatts and the rest of it. So um, yeah, we'll we'll be waiting. Yeah, that would be disappointing, right? 2.1 seconds, as you've written here in your article. Uh, that produces 760 kilowatts of power. Yeah, I mean, the Blade batteries currently don't charge very quick. Like for the Seal, it's 120 kilowatts. I can only get when I charged it as a test. So, whereas with the, you know, even Model 3 performance or long range, you can get 250 kilowatts. The uh, EGMP cars, you can get 220 kilowatts, 230 kilowatts, maybe more sometimes. So yeah, yeah, I think BYD need to lift their game with the um, with the blade battery. Yeah, see that that'll be awesome on the track, like one of the track days. BYD, very good. So what are we thinking here? Um, hundred two hundred fifteen thousand dollars expected mm-hmm. comparison uh, as a conversion from uh, the Chinese yuan. Yeah. Okay. Very compelling. Nice. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that one. Maybe we'll have more news next week when they launch. Yeah. Um, Gaffer says, uh, it doesn't matter if it's not fast, it, <laughs> it looks faster. Yeah, yeah. That, that's true, right? It looks damn quick, i got to say. You know, from the side, it looks like an, like the sort of the shape of the first generation McLaren F1. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, and, you know, from the rear, it's just a combination. Like, from that angle... And the front of it looks a little bit like the first generation McLaren F1. But yeah, it's it just looks cool. Yeah, it does look pretty good. Nice. Um, speaking of LFP batteries, so this is interesting I found this week. Uh, BYD licenses production of LFP blade batteries to General Motors and Ford suppliers. So they're finding their way into the US, Riz. Interesting. It's, it's happening and mm. they can't do anything about it. That's the... The reality of it and actually while we're talking about what's blocked a lot of these chinese battery and car makers from entering the u.s market it's been this inflation reduction act that wants sort of production of battery materials and batteries um, in the u.s and that's how cars and manufacturers can be eligible for rebates and subsidies basically trying to block any sort of entry from some of the Chinese battery makers. CATL, one of the biggest battery makers supplier to Tesla, found a way where they did a partnership with Ford. Uh, Ford was going to license that technology from them and make them in Michigan or somewhere in the US. The senators or I guess the, the politicians got pretty pissed off about it, saying how can Ford use this basically there doing exactly what the US government didn't want to happen. And now there's this, which is, you know, one of the big supplies. I think they're called Borg. I can't remember what the supplier's name is, but they're pretty pretty global. Yep. Um, there you go, Borg Warner Inc. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they've got their supply to most brands. So, yeah, they'll be doing a deal with Fin Dreams, which is BYD's battery division. Um, and, yeah, that's going to happen. And that's on top of BYD potentially sourcing a manufacturing plant site in Mexico. Yeah, so they're planning to supply to uh, you know, GM, Ford, Stellantis, also another big brand. So, you know, it's pretty silly legislation, really. You can't, you can't stop every supply chain coming from China. Like, a lot of, a lot of stuff comes from China, full stop. There's no, there's no way around it. Like, half the stuff people write comments on that bag out China in my videos is... <laughs> the devices they use are from China. So it's, yeah, very silly. Anyway, we'll see. See what happens. Mm. Um, okay, let's keep going with uh, this one. So Porsche's updated Taycan is seeing some insane charging speeds. Anecdotal for now. Very impressive. Uh, we're doing, what would be, 306, 311, 316 kilowatts, presumably mm. for the new Taycan, which is pretty quick. Uh, anything over 300 is pretty quick. So we're looking at, what, you could charge potentially. I suppose obviously you're not going to get that kind of speed throughout the entire charge cycle, but you know, I guess the, the sweet spot might be 15 minutes. Really, if you get a car charged under 15, that would be like so quick, right? Yeah, I, and I guess it's the application as well. Like we often talk about how quick Tesla superchargers are on a road trip somewhere. So you know, you can't even grab a coffee and go to the bathroom and come back to your car by the time the car's charged already. 
So <laughs> this might be too quick. Maybe it's good for racetrack sort of environment, but yeah. imagine a 350 kilowatt charger at a racetrack. We we struggle to get them on the side of highways where we need them, let alone a racetrack. So I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I mean, currently in the Formula One, you don't need to refuel even. So if you can get a battery big enough, you probably don't need to recharge. But, you know, I just practically speaking, um, and I know Porsche drivers like to be in a hurry. So 15 minutes is probably oh. even too long for them. <laughs> um, but, you know, yeah, obviously we always promote the fact that you can just have a have a meal. But not everybody wants to have a meal at a charging stop. So for those who don't want to have a meal, then 15 minutes is probably, I think, reasonable. By the time you get out of the car, go to the toilet, you know, answer a few emails on your phone or laptop. Good to go, right? Interesting. Uh, yeah, Gaffer, I agree. Charging speeds should be measured from 20 to 80%. Yeah. Always recommend that in my videos too. Don't go to 100 if you don't need to on the road. It's kind of a waste of resources. Uh, Etron also remains over 200 kilowatts charging deep into the pack. That's good to know. Excellent. Um, where did I read today? Someone, one of the charging providers was um, giving some data that they're seeing that the average charge for a road trip is 30 minutes. I think that's that's kind of par for course at the moment for an EV, 30 minutes. Yep, it's it's what we're seeing in our data as well for charger utilization across fast chargers in Australia. The average mm -hmm. sort of session time is between 30 and 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's given most of our charges are sort of, 50, 75 kilowatts, even the ones that claim, for example, like the Ampol sites that claim to be 150 kilowatts are only good for the EGMP 800 volt cars. Most Teslas and others do maybe 80, 90. Mm. So yeah, given that, like, you know, 90 kilowatts, half an hour, that's 45 kilowatts, what sort of, you know, delivering. So yeah, half an hour, 35 minutes, it's mm. pretty good. Yeah, that's acceptable, I think, for most people. Uh, Mark makes a good point. Optimum racing demand, peak, state of charge for max power delivery. Good point. Uh, interesting watching the Formula E. You see the they always drain it all the way down to 1%, sometimes even zero. Sometimes I've seen a car push over another car over the line, but they really the engineers really do work out, uh, you know, all the way to zero almost for the whole race, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, so Riz, you want to share this one? This is... Uh, this is the BP Pulse safety car. Let's have a look at this one. So introducing the all new BP Pulse safety car, the official safety car of the Repco Supercars Championship. Nice. It's pretty cool. What car is that? The Taycan. It's Ionic... Taycan. It is the Taycan, okay. Yeah. Yeah, those safety cars have to go pretty quick. How will the uh, how will the fans feel about an EV safety car? <laughs> uh, as long as it's not running around Bathurst. <laughs> okay, well, good on you, BP. That's good. Trying new things. Cool, nice. Uh, when will we see that? I wonder. Yeah, well, hopefully this year, because if I guess it's more of a statement more than anything else that now, you know, if you want to talk about motorsport, electric cars are there. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's I think it's a win win situation for, you know, EV fans, um, BP, I guess they want to look cleaner and greener and with their charging infrastructure rolling out mm -hmm. and Porsche, they want to be sort of the leaders in electric cars and they don't have to cut prices to do that because Porsche drivers or Porsche owners are more than happy to pay whatever they ask for. So if a Taycan is 400 grand, that's what they'll pay for. And look, I've never seen a safety car do more than what, five laps. If you're lucky, maybe six, seven. So they're not going to run out of charge. They'll be fine. But as you said, good advertising for BP Pulse and gives a, a, a fan, the fans a chance to see an EV running around the track. So good move. I like it. Um, yeah, okay. Scott's saying this season we'll see it. Um, they've got two. Very good. And on display at Bathurst as well. Fantastic. Awesome. Oh, here we go. Apparently, in, in, not in Sydney, uh, Radio Shock Jock claimed tradies would have to charge multiple times per day. I seriously doubt that. 
I really seriously doubt that, unless you go into a lot of jobs. Well, having said that, tradies already charge multiple times a day. All their batteries that they've got, they know how to do it. Yeah. And they can do it for all their power tools. They can do it with an EV as well. And last week, I'm not sure if this, I can't remember, I saw something along the lines of the opposition leader telling people that um, the current government wants to increase the price of an average car by $25,000 for an average mm. Australian person because they're going to go through this fuel emission standards. Um, uh, yeah, it's it blows your mind to think where yeah. these people live. Mm. There's a few OEMs have actually agreed to option B, right? I read this week. Even Toyota's yeah. been uh, sort of agree, agreeing in principle. Hyundai was one of the first to jump on board, which is good. So I should get over the line, I would have thought, if Toyota's agreeing in principle. Um, all right, let's move on. And we've got, uh, yeah, some more Tesla news. So Roland, our friend from Zapt, uh, white bucket seats confirmed in the new Model 3 performance. Have a look at these. Seen in Santa Monica, Los Angeles. What do you think of these bucket seats? Oh, very cool. I think they've got that ludicrous sort of um, that logo thing uh, in between sort of the headrest and the back part of the seat. Um, are supposed to hold you more into the seat um tom you drove the mg4 x power and what did you think of that bucket seat type of a setup was it okay comfortable yeah look i i've driven a few cars with bucket seats like even the recent kia gt line i had kia v9 gt line had bucket seats like look i'm not a i'm not a big guy right like i'm reasonably slim so i don't, didn't mind i felt didn't felt feel too bad having the sides of the seat sort of hug you uh, not that I was tearing around in the EV9, but with the MG, it was quite nice because, you know, it handled pretty well. So, I, I you know, if you're going to go quick in this thing, then, yeah, I suppose it'd be nice to have bucket seats. I wonder if there's any uh, any any car companies that have got, like, powered bucket seats where it sort of conforms to the shape of your body. So it's more custom. That might be yeah, an option. Yeah, my Rolls has it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just the Spectre. <laughs> of course. How can, I, how can I forget? Sorry, Riz. Yeah, my apologies. I'm still waiting for Rolls to get back to me. That said March, so still waiting for that. High net worth. That's I know who it is. That's right. I don't have the high net worth, but we know some of you watching have high net worth. You're just too shy to say so. We just need one or two sales, people. Get us over the line here. (laughs) Yeah, no, I agree. Those seats look really good. Um, And, you know, if you're going to pay more money for a performance Model 3, uh, that could potentially give that young one U9 a run for its money for three seconds, you know? So this car is probably worth oh, probably going to be half the price. Pretty good value. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Um, okay. Tazzy EV saying Ford F-150 Lightning can charge right from the vehicle. Yeah, that's true. If you got V2L in the back, you can charge your power tools. Correct. Um, and Tazzy says, thought that was the U9 you had Riz going for hypercar now. Yeah, we talk, we covered that earlier. That's the plan. I'm just waiting for President Xi to send me one. <laughs> so it's, it's on its way. <laughs> that's right. Don't hold your breath. No, no, just kidding. You'll get one. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, more Tesla news. So, yes, the Cybertruck we discussed with Elliot Richards on the show last week or two weeks ago that we saw it in China. It's now being spotted in Japan, in Tokyo. Uh, this is that Team Lab's. Uh, in Tokyo, and I've been there. It's a pretty cool place, and yeah, good place to put it too. So there it is on display right there in Tokyo. No rust in that one, Riz. Ooh, too soon? No, it's it didn't come <laughs> on a train. That's why. Um, no, I think it's it, it's pretty cool. I mean, thousands of people will get to see it. The real question is: so thanks, Billy, for these photos. That's awesome. Mm. Where is it going next? Mm. Surely Singapore. Singapore, Hong Kong, and down yeah. here maybe. Yeah. Well, anywhere where I think Tesla needs to shake things up a bit and get a bit more publicity and, you know, the way things are going, um, it might as well be down here. I mean, imagine if they came in and, you know, drove it somewhere near the Nullable, you know, and... Yeah, that yeah, would be cool. cool. Yep. Yep. We'd love to see this uh, tearing it up, definitely. Nice one. Uh, yeah, let's uh, sort of hinted at the rust issue. Uh, is this more fudgeries, or is there any truth at all to this rusting in the in the cyber trucks? 
Look, to be honest, I haven't kept up because I'm just trying to make sure that, uh, you know, I, I look forward to the Cybertruck in 2030 when it gets here. And by the time it gets here, all the rust issues will be sorted. That's right. Everything rusts, as we sort of know, in terms of the, even, you know, um, it's funny, I was driving one of the, one, another electric car from a brand with uh, wheels on it that uh, you could clearly see you know, the, the brake discs and the rest of it. And after a bit of rain, it had some surface rust on it. Mm. So it happens everywhere. It's uh, just, you know, how you maintain it. So we'll mm. find out, you know, in 12 to 18 months. Um, fortunately, this time, it's the US owners that are the lab rats and not us. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they'll fix it. But yeah, yeah not a good look, I guess. Um, apparently, it's not some sort of paint that's not on the steel. But stainless steel doesn't actually mean rust free right it's there are stains still happening in the stainless steel um, and and i guess the other part is like cybertruck looks cool with its steel body but some of the coolest sort of trucks now are wrapped so the cybertruck people that are wrapping them in different colors and matte sort of wraps and other things i guess that's mm. going to protect it and you know every couple of years you can just change the wrap to something else mm. Yeah, good comments here from the audience. It says that, uh, yeah, Tesla engineer today said that it's rust dust left over from, like, train, you said, Riz, uh, either transporting or transfer. Yep, possibly. Uh, yeah, and low-grade stainless steel does not take much to rust. Again, hopefully that'll be fixed soon. When it does come in 2030, Riz, yeah. to sell your Spectre by then. Um, have to have stepped up. <laughs> Tazzy Evie says, will be interesting with salted roads in winter, how they deal with that. Okay. Uh, Actually, speaking of Cybertruck news, uh, last week or so, another celebrity has been seen in getting into one. Mm -hmm. This time around, it's Lady Gaga. Oh, really? Okay. And previously, it was Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. um, and I also saw, um, you know, good friend of the US rap music scene, Snoop Doggy Dog. Oh. Has said, yep. Elon, where's my Cybertruck? Do I have to buy one or are you going to send me one? Dog. So yeah. that's that's basically it. I mean, obviously, Menu Log is not paying him enough. <laughs> uh, so he just wants Elon to drop it like it's hot. So <laughs> get like one over hot. to Snoop and he will basically take it to Korea with Psy and Gangnam Style and whatever else needs to happen. Basically be the brand ambassador for Cybertruck. Not sure if Tesla really wants Snoop Dogg. <laughs> as a brand ambassador i'm not sure what all that marijuana smoking does inside the truck but we'll find out i'm sure snoop will get one if pharrell williams has one. Oh right okay so he like was this... one of the huh oh this is definitely a rapper's car you know that you're a rapper yourself. that's what i was thinking i like, forget yeah. about the escalade this is the this is the future celebrity rap rap mobile <laughs> with the air suspension right yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Gaffer says just surface speckles. Okay, the fact that just cleans off. Interesting. Iron fragments from the road. Peter says just wrap it. Yeah, I agree. Just wrap it. Oh, I'd buy this if I had a business, right? If you really want to stand out, you just wrap it. Uh, yeah, maybe. Oh, well, if you drive it in Australia, you're going to get the red dirt. If you, uh, people will just say that's rust, but it, maybe it's just our, our red earth driving across the um, outback. Cool. All right. Well, we'll see what happens, uh, whether it's just the, you know, the first batch of Cybertrucks or whether it's true. We'll find out. Moving on with the big cars. So Rivian R2 uh, has been teased. So this is the smaller Rivian, like a Model yeah. Model Y sized even, or, or not that small? I think it would get close. Maybe. I'm not sure how big the R1S is. I think Rahul's probably mm. one. And I, you would have seen one maybe, mm. Tom, in the US. They're pretty big. Yeah, I saw that pretty big. This one definitely looks smaller. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably Range Rover size. Yep. Mm. Yeah, it kind of looks like oh. a Range Rover there, actually. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that that's quite a nice size, right? For a, It's like a large SUV, like a Kia EV9, rather than a mm. big truck. So that, I mean, I'd love to see these on our roads, you know, for big families, if you need the space. Apparently, it's going to Europe. I oh, heard yeah, some cool. Whispers. Nice. So this will be unveiled March the 7th. So mm -hmm. not, not far away, like a couple of weeks. Nice. 
hundred dollar deposit. It sounds very familiar. <laughs> okay, nice. NACS, good. We know Rivian's got that for the US. Yeah. I mean, this will give like some of the other big cars here and for the money having a Rivian here. All right. Um, GM Super Cruise now works on 750,000 miles of roads in the US. Interesting. This is the GM sort of autonomous driving network. And that's GM's real rapid car, Escalade IQ. <laughs> now, that's, yeah, that, uh, apparently. It would be really interesting to see how this system compares to, like, Tesla's autopilot on similar roads. Mm. Because I think this is mainly highway drive, yeah, highway driving. So I guess mm. you know, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that makes sense on the highways. You know, makes you drive a lot easier. Look at that three screens. I wonder whether that comes standard with their cars, or it's like Porsche where you get have to pay for that extra oh. screen. And another one here, fourth screen. <laughs> well, if if the software works in any of those screens, then they'd be selling cars. <laughs> Apparently, they had a really like huge problem with their affordable Blazer EV that they launched. Software issues, dealers don't want them back, people don't know what to do with them, owners feel like they got stooged. Mm -hmm. So GM is a in a whole lot of pain. And at the moment, most of their products that they're showcasing are just being, um, it's, it's basically just that, prototypes, and it will come and it's supposed to happen. Uh, the Hummer EV on the used car market in the US, like one, one and a half year old Hummer EVs are like half price <laughs> of what people yeah. paid with all the dealer markups. So that's a car mm. with, what was it, 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's a big car, big heavy car. Yeah. And not probably not very efficient being a Hummer as well. So probably not getting that much range. Uh, good question from Gaffer. I wonder how much Nag Super Cruise is forced to do. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, we don't know, right? Um, interesting. All right, halfway point. Let's uh, thank our sponsors. As always, we have Carlu. Thank you, Carlu, for data. Thank you, Cobra, for insurance, and thank you, Warbox, for EV charging. Thanks, everyone. Fantastic. All right, Riz, let's move on to uh, this news. Here we see that uh, the Ionic Five N starting to be delivered around town, at least in Sydney, anyway. Hey. That. Uh, it's a magnificent look for looking vehicle. Did you get a chance to look at these at EE recently? Yeah, I, I saw them in person. I never got to test drive one. I thought I'd leave it for some of our viewers and others that were really keen to get behind the wheel of one. They're very cool. And Hyundai had quite a few of them for test drive. So kudos to them for making this happen. And yeah, now the customers are receiving them. There's, uh, you know, 120 grand is for whatever they're worth. <laughs> Custom built cars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it, inside, there's a few more buttons, but essentially it's an Ionic 5 that's been souped up pretty much. And like, you know, Nash and I had, had a test drive. Um, he was kind enough to let me sit in the back. But yeah, like the way they've done it, it looks, it, it sounds fantastic. It sounds like a proper race car. Like the paddle shifters actually act as like, you know, gear shifters. Um, they've got the crackles. I've got the, you know, the revs, RPMs on the screen, even though it's all fake. <laughs> but still... Uh, it's amazing. So, yeah, kudos to um, Hyundai. I've done a really good job, actually. Uh, and, yeah, I am doing a track day very soon with Hyundai, so thank you for the invite, Hyundai. Um, they really made a great effort, Riz, as you said. They were one of the biggest stands uh, at Electrify Everything. Um, no, sorry, Everything Electric recently. So they're, they're really trying to do good things in the EV space. Um, Kangaroo says, yeah, I gave it a test. Noises were interesting. Didn't do the grin mode. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens on the track day. Yeah, plenty of power when you press the red button. That's right. That uh, was like insane mode or something. NGB. Um, yep. What do you think about these short-term boost type of buttons? Mm. So Genesis had them. I don't Kia. know if the Kia EV6 GT mm. has one. But yeah, and this car obviously has one. And port the new... I know the new McCann has one. And I'm pretty sure the Taycan would as well. So, yeah, what do you think about this additional boost? Honestly, it's probably a bit of a gimmick, right? I mean, they're, they're quick enough to to get off the line at a traffic light if you really want to beat someone. It's it's kind of a show-off thing, isn't it? <laughs> Those buttons, which is fine. If you're going to pay that much money, 
then it's a nice touch to have because the GT is not cheap. The Kia EV6 GT, this isn't cheap. The Taycan isn't cheap, but you know, if you that make if you if you need that to make you feel good, then yeah, fine, go for it. Riz, thoughts? <laughs> well, I think it should be. I know they say it should be on tap, but you know, it it, it should be there all the time. Like it, it, it's not. Yeah, I, I don't know why they do it. Maybe there is a whole bunch of car enthusiasts that do want it for that you know, that uh, 10 second or whatever they give you. What I found, I think from memory, because it was a while ago now, the Genesis GV60, um, that had a green button, looked pretty cool, but mm. yeah, you press it and you get a bit of a boost, but then after that, it's sort of gone. So yeah, instant torque is always there. So yeah, not sure. Maybe it's a selling point. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, that way the dealers can sit down with you get this button. This now this is why yeah. you buy this car, right? <laughs> Australia's not ready for EVs, but you press this button and then yeah, as long as you yep. pay 120 grand to a dealer, they'll sell you one. Yeah, that's right. Then you'll be ready. That button makes you ready. Uh yeah, Kangaroo says, uh, love how the Polestar has no modes. It's it's sporty all the time, yeah. A bit like the Tesla, sporty all the time. Yeah, BYD seals the same. You got sporty all the time. Yeah. I don't know. If, if you need that, then look, I'm glad those brands have them because clearly they've done their market research and clearly that's what buyers want for these to the top end spec ones. Oh, good point, Billy Lid. So if you crash your car when you hit the button, will you be covered by insurance? Surely. If it's a it's a it's a it's a factory standard, right? Surely you'll yeah. be covered. Yeah. Well, it depends. If you rear end someone, then you're not covered. Because... <laughs> How fast does it go in reverse? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is, uh, speaking of Polestar, this is Elliot Richards, our good friend from China. Um, new Polestar on the road in Shanghai. Spotted. So that's, that's the Polestar 4? Polestar 4. This is the one without this without the rear view mirror. This has got the digital mirrors. It is. But then there was some news articles this week saying there's going to be a rear view option. Yes. So that looks like a toggle to me that Sawyer's posted. Yeah. yeah. The Kia EV6 GT line, which I tested, has this toggle. In fact, it's probably got this, it's the exact same technology. See that? That's what the Kia EV, EV, Kia EV6 had, uh, EV9 had, sorry. You see, the problem is that there's still quite a bit of glare. See that in that corner? Yeah. Even though it's video. Drop that pin. Yeah, it looks appears that way definitely. With um, I guess we'll find out. I yeah. don't think it's here till until the second half of the year. Mm. Yeah, what what size is that car? It's about uh, EV six size or a bit, yeah. bit smaller. Yeah, Ionic sort of five size. Yeah. Um, I guess we we're talking about Polestar being in a bit of trouble last couple of streams and i think this car looks cool i'm just not sure how many people will be spending close to a hundred grand for a vehicle like this it looks cool don't get mm. me wrong but you know when kia dealers are sort of um you know slashing 10 plus thousand dollars on an ev6 mm. then yeah not sure is that what they're proposing? Close to 100, 100 grand Aussie for this? Yeah. Because mm. the Polestar 2 is starting at about 60, isn't it? Yeah, 65, I think. Maybe 67 now. So, yeah, it will be interesting to see. By the time the car gets here, there will be a few other options. Having said that, it will, if you buy one of these, you will stand out from the crowd. Yeah. Well, that's why you buy a Polestar. You want to stand out? Not very common. Yeah, look, they, look, I'm sure they've got very good customer service. Uh, they, their cars look fantastic. Great options, you know, the digital mirror like that. Um, they're a very comfortable ride, I must say. So whether it's worth that much, you know, that's your call. Yeah. But yeah, they're good cars. Let's not forget that. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to seeing that on the roads in the showrooms in Chadston. Actually, you know, we haven't seen the Sydney showroom open yet. We were promised they would be open by start of this year. Hmm. I heard there was... Yeah, I, th I was sitting next to someone on a plane and they were talking about doing some work at a Sydney delivery center. I'm not sure if that's the same as the new showroom, but they were talking about it, weren't they, at the 
Polestar to refresh launch Tom back in I think it was July or August. Mm. Yeah, they, they they were telling us it'd be in the north of Sydney. Mm. Um we know Chatswood Chase in the Sydney's north has been undergoing a lot of renovation. I, that was my pick. I thought it might be there on the ground floor there. But haven't seen anything yet, although there's still some barricades there. So yeah, people in the north of Sydney, have a look at Chatswood Chase. Keep an eye on that. That's my my pick. That's where it's gonna be. Uh, oh, Kangaroo, Kangaroo Island is saying it's going to be a little less than 100. Closer to 80, I think. Okay. Polestar is not a volume producer, but they do need to sell some. Agreed. They do really need to sell their cars. Hmm. Hal says if Polestar can't get the price down, then the game over. Too much competition. Hmm. Oh, Oggy Oggy, BYD Abalone for the, uh, for the young <laughs> one. <laughs> nice. Uh, and yeah, Polestar is aiming at the BMW yeah. Mercedes market. They sure are. That's right. And if they're aiming at that, I think they'll win because the Polestar, the, the interiors and the quality of materials and sort of the, 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 the ride of the Polestar 2 is pretty nice, although it's based on an ICE platform. This mm. is a ground-up electric car. So, yeah, I, I can't wait to test drive it and see what it's really like. Mm. Yeah, I mean, why do you buy these luxury cars? You know, because you don't want anyone, to, everyone else to be driving one, right? You want to buy one, so you stand out. So it's different. If everyone drove one of these, then you don't want it anymore. <laughs> I think that's the philosophy anyway. Yeah. Don't know. I've never owned a luxury vehicle, apart from Tesla Model S, I guess. That still counts as luxury. Um, okay, let's have a look at this article. Okay, this is interesting. So speaking of uh, European brands, VW uh, unveiling their first ever electric wagon, the ID7. Tora. Now we, I, I personally like the shooting brake station wagon type car. Uh, Sawyer is saying 86 kilowatt hour battery up to 426 mile range, 685 kilometers WLTP. All chat GPT is on board for the first time. Seats with pressure point massage, air conditioning, but not coming to the US. So, so this, you know, love wagons. We spoke about the BMW i5 coming in a wagon variant. Mm -hmm. Um, it looks cool. Looks like the Volkswagen Arteon, uh, the ICE car that was around slightly larger. Volkswagen so far has struggled to sell the sedan version of this car. You can see by the interior, very Model 3-like in many mm. ways. But yeah, I'm not sure how they're going to go about this, but they need to get these cars out quick. And if they price them at, what was it, 60,000 euros or whatever it is? Yeah, let's have a look. Uh, oh. I don't have figures for that. Yeah, so mm. somewhere around there, that's, you know, we're talking nearly 100 grand for this car by the time. If it gets there, and Volkswagen still needs to release their first EV in the market in Australia. Yeah, that's right. I think at EE there was a um, ID4 that Ampol had in their stand, but, you know, I've never seen one in the wild. and I've never seen one being test-driven either, so I don't know. I don't know how Ampol got one. And if it's if it's sort of like the you know the iPhone, then we haven't even got the fourth generation. This is the seventh generation car, the ID seven here. Yeah, true. And uh, Volkswagen, what are you doing? We've got the Cupra. Uh, yes. The software's a bit, yeah, so so in that thing. S speaking of which, I heard. Well, I think I might have seen something today. Then in Europe, there's a more powerful version of the Cupra Born, the Cupra Born VZ. Yes. The X or V said yes. Oh, that's yes. right. Yeah. yeah. That looks promising, actually. Yeah. yeah 240 kilo. Well, 240? Yeah, 240 kilowatts or something like that. It's anyway, we can, we need to get that. And I think the the MG4 X power has put a bit of pressure on Volkswagen Group to actually pull their finger out and get some of these um sort of warm to hot hatches out because Cupra Born was the, the what we have now is barely a warm hatch. It has good yeah. range. Software is okay. That's it. Yeah, I mean they look like they look really good. Every time I see one, I, I go, "Wow, that's a good looking car." Like you know, they, they make great cars. They look good, good anyway. Um, this could give you know this obviously give MG four run for its money. That's kind of the a true hot hatch. This will be like if it's actually this quick, it'll be very fast and and zippy. And even it looks that, like the MG4. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The matte paint thing they've got yeah. going on is like that MG racing green. Yeah. Hunter green, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, hopefully it's uh, if it does come here, it's connected. Unlike the um, Cooper Bourne, no connectivity. Um, 
Uh, 5.7? That's not that quick, Riz. 0 to 100 or 0 to 62. Yeah. What's going uh, on? That is, that is not good. Mm. For a warm... Like, you want to excite young people. If, you know, young people buy a lot of these sort of warm to hot hatch cars, I um, mm. genuinely think the MG4X power, if they can improve the software slightly, the overall car is pretty cool. And it mm. is genuinely feels like a nice sort of a warm to hot hatch competitor. You know, we want people to stop buying Volkswagen Golf R's and Mercedes AMG A45, you know, that they already spent 90 grand for, buy an MG4X power for 65, or this thing yeah. for 65 if it's here. One I mean, day. the MG4, MG4X power is 0 to 103.8 seconds. That's yeah. like insane for a $60,000 vehicle. And it's actually pretty well put together too. Like it's pretty good quality. I mean, and, and one of the things, you know, we, you were talking about this earlier, Tom, when you went for a bit of a drive with Nash, mm. the, the mayor of the Gong. Nashville. Yep. It's in Nashville himself. <laughs> um, that, the, you know, the Ionic 5N makes all these noises. And I know we're in the EV world now, but for a car like the MG4 X Power, when you put your foot down, it makes the motors do make a bit of noise, which is a bit exciting. If, you're into that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, this thing is a little bit slower and a little bit behind the MGX power. By the time this comes out, they'll probably have the next generation even more high-powered, mm. um, you know, MG4 Y power or something. <laughs> X squared power. X, squared. X cubed. X cubed. Yeah. 3.8 is pretty good. Um, yeah, look, I agree, Kangaroo Island. Yeah, handling is important as well. The, the Cooper does handle well. The MG4 is not bad, but the Cooper still beats it with the handling. Yeah. But, you know, you're talking about the speed still. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, BYD Seal, yeah, for sure. BYD Seal, yeah. also 3.8 seconds for the performance. Uh, still no conductivity in the Cooper. That's correct. Yes. Uh, and Kangaroo asked Ampol, that ID4 that we saw at the show came from the UK. It's pre-prod, pre-pod, pre pod Free prod apparently, according to Tazzy EV. Hmm. Yep. And the newborn is being improvement in performance. Yep, definitely. Hmm. Oh, back on the um, ID7, Neo ET5 touring is a good option. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Neo, if you're listening, need to get one in, into Tom's hands. We need to see what it's like. Um, yeah. I mean, Neo makes some beautiful looking cars. Would love to hmm. drive one one day. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, Zika's coming later this year. Yes. So that's not a good option. Yep. Um, oh, I wonder. Oh, yes, that's right, Peter. Good point. Um, when we saw the Dolphin Riz back in the Gold Coast, Luke Todd <laughs> did mention the uh, the sporty one coming out, right? That's not been hinted at at all this year. January, wasn't it? January's gone. Yeah. And Luke's gone too. <laughs> He's not oh, the CEO anymore. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. Easy come, easy go. Um, yeah, yeah, good point, Peter. I don't know. I mean, next time I see any of them, I will ask about it. We'll ask Mark, Mark Harlan. Yeah. Um, he's quite engaging. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing the performance one. So I've got the BYD Dolphin next week, everyone. So I'll, I'll do a, a review of that on the channel. So stay tuned. Finally, uh, Tazzy Evie says, as long as the Cooper Born VZ uses v4.x of the software stack, same as the ID7 uses, it is far above the oldest software versions. Oh, high fee's gone broke. Is that news? Oh, yes. I've heard they suspended production for six months or puts told staff to go home for six months or something like oh, that. Okay. Let's have a look. Um, Chinese EV maker Human Horizon suspends um, a manufacture of luxury high fee brand for six months as market competition intensifies. Hmm. I think this was in like this high fee, I believe, was in one of the Beyond Nylon's recent videos. So mm. I wonder if they've sort of, you know, gone broke before they've landed in Europe properly. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this recently. Like, we're going to see a lot of consolidation with these Chinese mm. brands, right? There's a lot of them out there. It, it just, it's going to be a matter of uh, attrition, really, I would have thought. Well, I think JB should buy one. JB High. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Sticking in one of their stores. Yep. That's it. Attract all the people. They already sell electric scooters and pretty much anything. So. That's true. 
They're selling kitchen goods as well. Yep. Yeah. Expanding. Yeah. Laid off most everyone, unfortunately, and they shut the factory for six months. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, that's the risk, isn't it? Buying one of these cars. Um, you want a company that's going to last and last and last, not just the battery. Okay. Thanks for letting us know. That's good. Um, okay. So we're about to wrap up, but let's uh, talk about hydrogen because we kind of like talking about hydrogen. Um, global sales of hydrogen vehicles fell by more than 30% with China becoming the world's largest market. Uh, it's, I mean, that's a bit of a, yeah, it's a, it's the largest market, but if you look at the stats, it's tiny. It's not many cars at all being sold. So here we go. Only 14,000 uh, full, full cell, full cell, <laughs> fuel cell EVs were sold worldwide in 2023 compared to 20,000 in 2022, uh, driven by a large fall in sales in South Korea, which is one of the countries that's actually making fuel cell EVs. Mm. It's a bit of a worry for hydrogen. There we go. Uh, only 5,000 were sold in China, Riz. Mm. Interesting. Still more than Polestar? Ooh. Yeah, well, yeah, soon? see, I'd like to verify that <laughs> that stat yeah. from LEF, but I I think, <laughs> yeah, probably more than Polestar, but I'm, I would like to see the breakdown of who those manufacturers are that are still selling these apart from Toyota and maybe Hyundai. Mm. Yeah, there can't be many more, right? I think they're the big two. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and Dr. Carl, for UK's first vehicle to grid tariff, offering free charging for EVs if the customer allows the energy provider to utilize their vehicle's battery to export electricity back to the grid during peak demand hours. Here's a quick straw poll. Would you allow your electricity company to control your car charging if it means you get paid? That's an inter interesting dilemma. So it's it's sort of like people opting in to those virtual power plant offers to a certain degree. Obviously, you need the car. And it's not like your battery that's stuck on a wall. But if people opt in to do <laughs> something like that, great. But I personally okay. don't see huge uptake of this because people are, you know, we like driving cars and people are generally... What's theirs is theirs. Mm. It's sort of like the battery swap technology is not really being taken up as well in Europe as it is in China. Mm. So people still prefer to own their batteries. In, in And I think Neo had to make that decision because they originally launched by just having buy the vehicle and lease the battery in Europe and people didn't like that. So they mm. offered, hey, you can actually purchase it now. Okay. So, yeah, interesting times, but it is a good trial for people to see what you can possibly do with this technology. Mm. Yeah, I think personally, let me think, I probably would prefer to have control over my car just because I don't know if the power company knows how much I need for the next day. You know what I mean? Like, I would rather this car power my home and I control how much I need for the night for air conditioning or heating or whatever. And then I would hate to wake up and have the power company suck up all my battery. And I can't get to work the next day. <laughs> that would suck. Well, if we're seeing, unfortunately, what's happening in Victoria at the moment with some of the grid operators here, there's mm. people that still don't have power from those storms the other day. Mm. And, you know, the grid operators, it's privatized now. So who, who controls your meter? Is it the grid operator or is it your electricity retailer? If it's your grid operator, then, you know, I guess... How much do they know about EVs from the sounds of things? That's a very good point. How much do they know about EVs and how much education have they got, right? That's a really good point, Riz. Yeah. I mean, these people are saving this much money, but I mean, you paid that much money for your car, which you want to use. So is it a bit of a false saving? And and if you don't need that much power for your car, why do you have such a big battery? You know what I mean? Like it's kind of a... The economics are a bit strange. I mean, again, I, I think V2H makes sense for me, for my personal situation. But V2X, V2 Grid, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to sit down and do the maths on that one. Mm, what do you guys think in the chat there? Let us know. Uh, yeah, good point. I think I, I've actually subscribed to Evergen back in the day. Um, you, you don't, well, that's the thing. You don't actually, I don't think you could actually set a, a limit. They control your battery and they'll take it when they need to. But that, 
as you said, Riz, it's a stationary battery, so it's probably easier. Whereas with a car, like if you're not plugged in, they can't use it. So they send a text to your app or notification to say, hey, plug your car in. You're about to earn two bucks uh, a kilowatt hour or whatever, you know, for the next hour. Well, that's it. Or do they send someone to knock at your sort of door and say, hey, <laughs> it's, it's a good time. You should do something. <laughs> Some creepy guy. <laughs> hey, plug in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you, you'd hope so, right? You'd hope there'd be some sort of limit, surely. Mm. Surely. Uh, yeah, Tazzy says they aren't draining a battery, though. They would only be taking a small percentage. And yeah, of course, they'll pay for it for sure. Yeah, but these are the questions that need to be answered before a trial like this happens. Yeah. Cool. All right. And let's wrap up tonight with uh, Bridie. Bridie's uh, post a uh, new ADAA report. Who are the ADAA? Is it the Australian Dealership or Association? Is that who they are? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, Agility Dog Association of Australia. No, that's not it. Oh. Um, that can't be it. Um, Unless it means AADA, which is Australian Automotive Dealers Association. Oh, maybe, yes. That must be it. It uh, might be a, a typo. Let's have a look. AADA. Okay, you're right, Riz. Australian Automotive Dealer Association. Could be Australian Accounting Standards Board. Could be Australian Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, I think it's probably the first one. Anyway, Bridie says 71% of people, according to this report, want EV incentives. 67% of people keep keeping their old car longer due to cost of living. 62% say they will buy a large SUV or ute next. Not surprising. And 25% open to buying an EV next. Interesting. Uh, seriously, though, how many people actually need a ute as a daily driver? Hmm. Well, top two selling vehicles, right, last year? Ford Ranger? Yeah. High lux, so clearly people do. <laughs> and I think number three or four as well, the Isuzu D Max. Yep. So yeah, it's it's either that or the fleets, that's all they need. Yep. So who knows? We'll find out. Yep, tax incentives. So here we go. Some uh, from quotes. Governments should be incentivizing customers more to transition to EV. Uh, I expect to keep my current car for longer due to the current cost of living. Um, average price premium consumers would pay for an EV. Respondents who say their next purchase will be a SUV or a Ute, and respondents who are opening to open to buying an EV for the next main vehicle. This has grown slightly from twenty one percent in twenty twenty two. Um, just a quick question. Mm. I'm not sure if in normal when we talk to each other, Tom, and if mm. you said, "Hey, um, would you keep your car for longer because it is getting more expensive out there?" I should respond to you by saying, I expect to keep my current car for longer due to the current cost of living pressures, Tom. I <laughs> don't think the cost of living pressure is, I'm not saying it's a, it's a real problem, but I don't know if that's how people, normal people speak. So I don't know how they can quote people saying that it's a cost of living pressure um, mm. unless they were really buying a Mercedes or something. Mm. And then, you know, maybe they're, they're out with the rich, and that's how the rich people talk. It could be a chat GPT summation as well of all the yeah. different quotes from people. Maybe Spread Volkswagen's out. been trialing their, you know, their stuff on their Tiguans or Tuaregs in Australia, and that's what it came out with. <laughs> Will people keep our cars longer? Yes, because of cost of living pressures. Well, what's the average time of uh, someone keeping a car in Australia? It is, it is about 10 years, isn't it? Um, I don't know the time the life of an average car is around about 10 years okay um, oh i see that's I, different yes yeah yep. so in terms yeah. of when people actually let's say swap over i guess if leasing is popular mm. three to five years maybe for after a first car and people upgrade to a new one yep you're right 10 years was the stat i read for the length the longevity or the life mm. cycle of a car rather than how, how long someone owns that vehicle for the point Let's take some more comments uh, about this uh, V2X. So better to keep it, Chalendra says, to use it like a virtual power wall under your own control, although the ideal charging times is daytime when the car is likely being used. Yeah, that's right. That's also a good point. Yep. Um, and I suppose there's lots of solar as well during the during the day, those hours too. So good time to soak up uh, energy. Uh, John X, so if you read the details, it says you have to plug in your car 170 hours a month, which is average six hours a day to get the tariff. Wow, okay. Oh. That's a lot, actually. Six hours a day. Now, if this trial is being done in the UK, haven't they got a problem where most people can't 
plug in at home or <laughs> they've got oh, a yeah. lot of yeah so i i, I don't know mm. yeah. oh here, here we go for you riz uh it'd be great to see data on ev uptake by age and gender mm. is that possible uh y- yes mm. so maybe it's a little project for me that's yeah i'd, I'd be curious to know uh Okay, so need penalties for large vehicle purchases, no specials anymore. Yeah, we talked about this recently too. Um, and yeah, okay. Yes, Sensei, yes, you did send me that video. Someone keying EVs in Sydney. Yeah, not very good. So I think it's making the rounds on the news. Not good. Uh, <laughs> Shalendra says that's all of the daylight in the UK. Yeah, if they're, if they're lucky. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Hell, we should invite Finn. He's a good man from Solar Quotes yes. about V2G. Very good, very good idea. I'll reach out. Uh oh, Andrew Seal's coming this week. Fantastic. Hey. Congratulations. Oh, Sam says driving his 2020 2004 Hilux for the last 30 years. That's uh, hang on. You mean 20 years? 20. Unless you come from the future. They must last a long time though. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, Riz, I think that might be it for tonight. So uh, let's wrap it up there. Thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight on the EV Show by Ludicrous Feed. And thank you again to Riz, our good friend and sponsor from Carlib. Thanks, Riz, for your time. Uh, good to be on, Tom and everyone. Keep uh, keep fighting a good fight and, you know, uh, debunking any of those myths around EVs. From the sounds of things, we have many more models to come this year. Mm. Uh, and we have finally got a cherry on top that's on its way. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, and do it do it in a respectful, polite way too. Some people are genuinely, you know, wondering. They're not out to get us, so to speak. So I I try to be respectful and see where they're coming from. They've got genuine concerns, you know. And if you think about it, yes, you know, some of them are are real. Um, we are early adopters. We're willing to put, to put up with a lot, but some people don't. They just want a car that works, infrastructure that works. And I I get that. Uh, I think that's the new phase of the uptake in the transition that we're in right now. So yeah, as Riz says, keep fighting the good fight, explain away. You've got the knowledge. So thank you very much. And uh, yes, uh, Rahul spends his apologies again tonight. He's with family. So hopefully we'll see him next week on the show. Thanks everyone. Uh, and thank you, Riz. We'll see you all next week on Ludicrous Feed Live. And as always, happy charging. Take care.